The Bunker, more than anything, is an FMV game. Full motion video was once a kind of self-parodying feature of a subset of video games that had a tendency to be low budget and poorly stitched together, and The Bunker, to its credit, brings out the advantages of the medium, but it also calls for a player input in some pretty questionable ways. The Bunker is actually less interactive than most point-and-click adventure games, and that tension between video and game is apparent within the first five minutes. In the early moments, you're shown a routine and you work your way through the checklist, experience several in-game days of lonely tedium, and learn about the backstory. It's a last man on earth kind of scenario, so you take medicine, check for radio broadcasts, eat canned food, and so forth. But gradually, your mouse clicks are skipped over until the routine speeds up and it becomes more of a montage. Then the already minimal player input gets even more minimal. It's okay though, because the lack of gameplay in this section seems to mirror how the protagonist, John, feels about his routine. It feels rote, appropriately, making this scene the peak of any kind of meta-awareness for the whole rest of the game. It's a short and evocative sequence that establishes the calm before the storm, but it's also the first five minutes of a two-hour long experience, and regrettably, it's the high point of its interactive mechanics. The timed events, for example, are a repetitive task that, at best, stays out of the way and bullies you at worst. They make for the most trivial moments in the bunker and are potentially very frustrating, almost as if frustration and death and restarting is a requirement in all video games. I'm just speculating though, I really don't know why quick time events are in the game, and I especially don't know why they're in flashbacks. The objectives are not exactly puzzles, but more like spatial checklists. One area early on, for example, has a broken fuse and a cardboard box full of working fuses, and you have to solve the riddle of how to bring the power back on. Even when you're free to explore the environment, it turns out to be empty of much meaning. There are some collectibles and readable papers, but nothing to better equip you for your journey, nor any info that changes your mind about anything. The bunker's moments of exploration are quite cleverly both visually dense and surprisingly easy to scan for clues. The bunker avoids the dreaded pixel hunting trope, native to point and click adventure games, by simplifying its puzzles and amplifying its details so the game invites the eye where the game wants you to look. It also seems almost like the game is playing itself most of the time because of how easy this aspect of it always is. The bunker achieves accessibility that nevertheless seems to be at odds with John's apparent fish out of water, complete unawareness of what things do and how they work. John's life is a struggle, but yours is a total cakewalk. With its simplistic gameplay, the game's main attraction is really the FMV. In its devotion to being non-interactive most of the time, The Bunker is essentially a feature-length movie you can watch and occasionally fail. I'm not a fan of movies to quite the same degree that I love video games, but I can say that The Bunker is visually striking, and at times, it's very creepy. This is a story where your own mom is a skeleton you read books to, and the outline of her skull draped over gingerly by a blanket is subtle, and quite chillingly a kind of safety zone throughout the early portions. It was because of the constant presence of this corpse that I felt primed for the body horror to come, and there's plenty in later scenes. In conclusion, the game is a good movie. For the part of you that's not too proud to play an extremely straightforward game, the Bunker offers a tale of solitude, a psychological thriller, and a journey of redemption for John. I found it interesting, if not entirely galvanizing, gameplay-wise. I'm Luis, and if you want more, please like and subscribe, and leave your thoughts in a comment. Thank you for watching the Games That May Concern.